Well, hey, everybody, this is Matt Pinnell coming to you with another episode of our Okla uh, Proud interviews. Uh, really just wanted to bring you Oklahomans that uh, uh, really relevant, good, relevant information for you to, to be able to digest. But hopefully you, you come away from some of these interviews with a little bit more pride uh, in our state, uh, people doing it the right way, just, just all of us just trying to get through this crisis. And today I've got Travis Davidson, who uh, Travis and I met. Cash dress, I don't know how long ago that was, maybe gosh, four or five months ago, you were catering an event uh, that I was speaking at. Uh, and I'll let uh, uh, Travis introduce himself here in a second. But this guy is hustling right now. He is in uh, the restaurant uh, world, uh, owns a couple restaurants, been very innovative uh, in the South Tulsa, in the Tulsa area, but uh, got a, has a restaurant in, the, in South Tulsa. And it, we, we've talked about it really from day one. Uh, about how bad of a position, uh, tough of a, of a position restaurants are in right now. Uh, they're, they're getting, they're really getting hurt uh, pretty bad right now when it comes to the hospitality industry, hotels and restaurants, and just really wanted to bring someone on that, that is, uh, that's hustling every day to stay in business uh, and really hopefully share with us some things that we can do, Oklahomans can do to help save restaurants. So with that, Travis, I'm going to hand it over to you. Maybe just introduce yourself and, and talk about the, the restaurants uh, that you have. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on again. Um, yeah, I'm Travis Davidson. Uh, I own Trey's Bar and Grill at 108th and Memorial in South Tulsa. And I also just recently opened up Cardinal Club. Uh, it's a new fine dining spot in South Tulsa, semi-private restaurant and cigar lounge where, uh, you know, 11 to 5, you've got your, uh, your business lunches and whatnot, where it's members only, Monday through Friday. And then after 5 o'clock, Monday through Friday, and then all day Saturday and Sunday, we're open to the public. So we, it's a unique concept. We were really excited about uh, launching it. We, we opened just early February. And the irony of it all, and this is truly once in a lifetime that this would ever happen, but Scott Cherry came out with the Tulsa World had a great time, gave us this huge review in the Tulsa world. And that's really, I mean, with Trey's even, we did, they did a review on us a couple of years in because we kind of changed our concept a little bit and it increased business, you know, 30, 40%. So with us just now opening and we had this, you know, four and a half stars for food, four and a half stars for service, five stars for atmosphere. We were so excited. And it, the same day that it went into the paper, the front page said eateries closing. You are kidding me. And I was me. like, Wow. Uh, it was there a worse paper for, or is there a worse edition of the paper, worst copy of the paper for our review to be in than, oh man, we should go check this out. Oh, what did the front page say? Oh yeah, we can't. Sorry. So it was uh, tough, man. At that well, point, it was kind it, of a comedy of errors. Fine dining in South Tulsa. Uh, you're speaking my language when, when I hear something like that. Uh, I, I loved that concept of the Cardinal Club. And, and again, we're going to get through this. Uh, and that is going to be a successful venture because I just, it, it is so unique, as you said. Yeah, we're, we're really excited about it. And what, what's cool is I was able to pull, I'll put my one two punch of, of chefs, my executive chef, Carla Cousins and my sous chef, uh, Jake Young, against anybody in town, anybody downtown, anybody midtown, any of that. Because, I mean, it was a huge coup for us to, I mean, those that aren't really familiar with the kind of the landscape, restaurant landscape of Tulsa, you know, it is extremely downtown and midtown led, um, even to the point where there are some like food purveyors that don't even have really fine dining salespeople in mm -hmm. South Tulsa because there's not enough to even warrant having a rep out. Yeah. Um, they keep so busy with downtown. So uh, we're really excited, uh, really excited to get this thing open back up. And, and it's, it's been, it's been interesting because it's giving us kind of a, kind of a time to, to focus on how important social media is. Mm. Um, we've, we've really, I mean, trays we opened in November of 2014. And so just celebrating, you know, five years uh, last November. So um, really social media has played such a huge role and we're seeing that especially now in our success. We've got over 7,000 likes on, on Facebook and they're very, they're very active. Um, okay. So during this whole you know, pandemic, that has helped guide kind of our innovation a little bit and really being able to get instant feedback. You know, That's when somebody good. posts on That's Facebook good. and says, hey, we'd like to see, you know, whatever, family meals. Okay. So I get on Cardinal Club, I talk with my chef, I'm like, hey, we need, seven family meals and now we've got family meals for four for cardinal club that are you know 
classic comfort foods like you know chicken and dumplings and beef stroganoff and cabbage rolls and stuff like that um all the way up to scallop and shrimp scampi and and that kind of stuff so we're trying to take care of the market and, and that you know that kind of leads into that next question of, i mean clearly this is affecting every restaurant but how has i mean again from it's i obviously sales are down some you're hustling out there but but listening to that social media feedback that has directly affected your menus. I mean, that that's really interesting to hear that, uh, that, that you got families looking for comfort food right now. That's a really good point. So you really change your menu based upon that. And that's what you're a lot of what you're delivering right now. Uh, indeed. Yeah. The chicken and dumplings beef stroganoff have been extremely popular. Um, and it's the ability to adapt in anything in life is, is vital. I mean, it's, when we had trays, we, when we opened up, we weren't sure whether we were going to be a bar or a restaurant. So what we did was we opened and we kind of gave ourselves the leverage to, after about a year, determine whether we need whatever the market wanted, because you don't know what the market needs until the market tells you. And if you knew what the market needed, like if it needed a bar and grill right there, then a bar and grill already would have been there. You know, it's, yeah. it's every place that builds a new, you never know until the market tells you that the concept is going to work. Yeah. Um, so on a, on a large scale, we did it at trays. Once we started winning, you know, we got Tulsa's best burger by the Tulsa world. We got Tulsa's best burger by Oklahoma magazine. We do hundred percent brisket, um, from Tulsa beef. Uh, we do Poncho Anaya does all of our locally baked brioche buns delivered fresh. Like we, we put our eggs in that basket once we realized what that space needed to be. So out here, the, the willingness to adapt, I, I tell chef all the time, like, like failure is not an option. Of course. When I said failure is not an option, we were trying to determine what the chicken dish was going to be, whether we were yeah, going to right, right. Different, different, whatever. different environment right now. Yeah, exactly. I didn't, she, she looked at me the other day and she goes, you said failure is not an option, but you, did you expect a global pandemic to show us that? <laughs> right, I was like, right. to be fair, no. But at the same time, right when it came down, when the news came down, you know, I was going through the stages of grief like everybody, like every restaurant tour was, um, especially some of the bigger guys that were going to have to lay. I mean, like Elliot's got, 800 employees you know so i with me i've got between the two restaurants i've got about 40 and i was like look i got single moms i got single dads i have my um manager over at trays is an expecting mother she's doing august like i've got transitioning people a lot of people a lot of people in their transition like to go to culinary because of how the food network and all these you know buzzfeed and tasty all these they've blown it up so much that i've got three employees that got laid off from their jobs and now are in transition and now they work for me and we've trained them up and they've become very valuable members of our staff. So with that being said, I've got, I've got, um, you know, felons, uh, multiple felons. I, I try and give, you know, everybody a second chance and they're some of my yeah. best employees. Um, so with that, I couldn't, I couldn't take all those people, the single mom, single dad, all that I just listed and just be like, Hey, sorry, there's nothing I can do. So, we were going to, if we were going to go down and if we do go down, we'll go down swinging. Um, yeah. There's, there's no doubt about, doubt about that. No, I, I, I don't, and I don't blame some of the bigger, you know, some of the bigger people for, for making the hard decisions. But, <clears throat> you know, I, with 40 employees, I looked at it and I was like, okay, if I can do just enough, you know, just enough, then and I, I'd be able to pay. So actually what we did was I've been paying all my people just as if I took the payrolls before, like the two payrolls uh, before we had to shut down. And basically averaged them out and just said, hey, this is what you guys make during a busy week. That's just what I'm going to pay you. I'm going to enter the payroll and make sure you guys don't have to decide what bill you can and can't pay. So um, that's it's awesome. been well, great. And you, 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 you say it, you, let's do just enough. So what, what does that look like? Again, you're hustling. It, this, this curbside, you do, you do deliveries because I see, I mean, again, you're so active on social media. And that's, that's what every restaurant's got to be doing right now. Uh, but, but you're so active on social media showing you're, you on doorsteps delivering um, uh, d delivering meals. I'm assuming some of these 40 employees, a lot of them are, are, are the ones making the deliveries as well. Uh, but, but how has that, uh, how does that process work with you right now as far as how that delivery works and that curbside pickup? So we usually, so we were set up on Chow Now through our online ordering at TraceColsa.com. Um, and they can either call or shoot a message. We had never done delivery before this. So 
um, it was really just new to us. When they said delivery, I said, all right, cool. Well, what I'm going to do is I, I knew, I knew then I would be competing with uh, DoorDash, Uber Eats, all that kind of stuff. I knew that that would be where, where it's, it's almost like I'm no longer competing with restaurants on the, on the social media side. I'm competing for the meals of the restaurants, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now I've got to compete with delivery. Delivery used to be, you know, our, you know, ally, right? They're like, oh man, the DoorDash and Uber Eats makes it so much easier. We can still get our food to people um, using these third-party service. Well, now we're competing against somebody that, that used to be our ally because what I do is I deliver pretty much anywhere. I mean, yesterday I took an order out to Sepulpa because I don't know when the, you know, when the orders are going to come in and if, you know, mm -hmm. if that person, you know, really enjoys it, you know, how good news travels and bad news travels twice as fast. So I wanted them to tell their friends, hey, even social media, anytime somebody posts on social media about thanks, Trey's, for the food, I personally share it. And then the Trey's page personally shares it and, and vice versa. Good. Same goes. Good. Smart. So Smart. with us, I'm, I'm doing all free delivery and any tips that go to the, that normally would be a delivery fee or driver or anything like that. I just go straight into the, I have a Trey's staff fund and a Cardinal Club staff fund. And I just distribute those to the staff to make sure that I can continue to pay them. I put in um, some money to both of those. My partners have put in money to both of those, but have to be creative. There's no doubt. That's awesome, man. That's really cool. Well, what is, you know, if there was some, if, if there was a message to Oklahomans right now that, that are at home, you know, a April is closed as, as we've now said in Oklahoma. Uh, some cities are, are, are doing different things, but, but there's now a statewide uh, kind of a safer at home policy that, that we have put down uh, for the month of the month of April. So what is the message to again keep calm and carry out is certainly what I continue to tell Oklahomans but but is there a message that you would tell you know those that are that are at home right now, the best way to be helping restaurants. Um, yes, I would, I've probably got a couple parts to this, so, um, bear with me, but obviously the easiest answer is order carry out. I mean, the, the thing about food safety, and I, I was talking with this about this with somebody the other day, another, uh, or a chef, um, we were talking and it's like, as far as food safety goes, like it, it might be safer to order from restaurants that have the health department come inspecting the kitchen. Um, you know, manager certifications. I have national, state, city, county certifications that I have to go through grueling hours of testing for my food safety certifications. Um, we've got all of those and that's just a way of life for us. We didn't have to change the way we were at least cooking the food with the virus because we already take food safety so seriously um, that and you know, we'll, we take extra steps as far as like delivery goes and whatnot, like gloves and all that, wiping down everything. But as far as the food goes, like you are 100% safe ordering from a restaurant. These people do, these, these people, their, their whole existence is run by the Tulsa County Health Department, everybody else. So yep. very, us, I think it's a very good point. It's a very good point to, to reiterate, you know, be, listen, this is their livelihood right now. They're doing everything the right way. And it is absolutely safe to be ordering food from restaurants. Yeah. And it, and it, you know, it, it always has been because we've just, it's a way of life. We don't have to learn any new things to keep you safe about food. We, we've learned those things over the, our whole careers. Um, those of you that uh, maybe can't, I mean, ordering out is more expensive than going to the grocery store and getting a couple pounds of pasta. That, I totally get that. It's, it can, you know, a lot of people when they talk about what they need to do to save money, the first thing to go is we need to stop eating out, which I totally get. So if you don't feel that you're in a position to, always financially support the restaurants. The best thing that you can do is everybody gets on Facebook, right? And they're like, uh, looking for somebody to deliver to 101st and Mingo tonight, tag your favorite restaurants, tag them because that shows up on my phone. It shows up on the other restaurant tour's phone, tag them. We will then see that find, like give them more information. Like I was in a newsletter um, that uh, Sam Koppelman did. Uh, he's out in New York in this newsletter. And what I do is if somebody tags me in something, it's got kind of our efforts on there and kind of what we're doing to adapt and whatnot. So what I do is I tag both restaurants and then I put that article in there. Like mm -hmm. everybody's fighting for, and it's kind of cool to see like, you know, you see John Crancer from Napa Flats and you see me and you see, you, you see uh, Natalie Whaley Alexander, Ben Alexander's wife with the Kelly's group, like uh, Jenny Savastano from Savastano. It's like, you see all of everybody kind of like jump in, like, cause that's what it is. I mean, it's, it's no longer, you know, 
you got just crowds coming through the door. You've really got to fight for it. So um, if you don't want to see a world that only has chain restaurants and franchises, then, I mean, you've, you've got to get, get online. It costs you nothing to share a post. It costs you nothing to tag the restaurant. For those of you that don't know how to tag the restaurant, you hit the at symbol and then you start typing the restaurant. That way it will tag them to the page and it will alert the restaurant or whoever's doing the social media for the restaurant. Uh, like I said, it costs zero dollars to share. Um, that's what I would recommend. Yeah, I mean, that is a tangible thing to help save restaurants. And, you, and you're right, if, if, if we, I don't wanna live in a world that is just chains. I, I know there's going to be chains, but it is so important uh, to be shopping local, uh, to be supporting restaurants, uh, you know, it, it, this is something that I've talked about since becoming lieutenant governor, how important sales tax revenue is for any city. We live or die on sales tax. And if we're going to live and die on sales tax, then we have to support local businesses. Uh, and that includes restaurants, of course. Uh, so I, that's some really good, re certainly really good information. The, the last thing I'll, I'll ask you, Travis, do you see this uh, affecting the restaurant industry uh, forever, uh, long term. I mean, uh, the, the, the innovation that you're showing, did, you know, you said you, you didn't do carry out before. You know, when this is over, uh, do you think you'll, you'll, you'll continue to, to, to be doing that? Uh, will you go back to just kind of traditional uh, uh, restaurant operation? Uh, how do you think this will affect the restaurant uh, business moving forward? Well, as with, uh, as with kind of our, our earlier conversation, like, who knows? You're just going to have to adapt, right? Is it, is it, are people so, you know, bottled up and cabin fever that we're about to see the biggest dine-in spike in Oklahoma history? I mean, I think that might be the case, mm -hmm. but it's, it's opened up our eyes um, to different revenue streams. Um, that's for sure. Uh, I think that there's kind of a, you don't know what you got until it's gone type situation uh, with a lot of places. Um, yeah. Heck, I was, I got off work early at 9 p.m. or something like that. And I was like, man, I think I'm going to grab a beer on my way home. And I was like, oh, no, I'm not. I'm like, I, it's just, it's still in my nature <clears throat> to be like, oh, hey, oh, wait, no, I can't. Like, I can't right. go out and be social around people. I think it's going to hopefully open up a lot of people's eyes to what local, what local entrepreneurs are doing um, yeah. to make sure they serve their community. So um, you kind of, you kind of see over the last 30 years or so, the, it went from like when I was growing up, it was the restaurant's food alone could carry the weight. It would carry the burden of, of mm -hmm. rent, everything like that. You could, a concept could live and die off of just if there was good food. Yeah. Next, it was okay, like, like the steak and ale days and whatnot, like had to have the atmosphere, had to have, you know, the nice service, the, everything like that. So people started really putting it into the whole dining experience. Yeah. <clears throat> and then now we're kind of in the age of community where you have to be involved in the community. You, it's there's value in being involved in the community. Yeah. There's, you know, there are people that have seen or felt the effects of like our Give Back Burger at Trays Bar and Grill that may never set foot in the door. Um, yeah. But it's all about being a good neighbor. You know, um, Eagle Scout. So you know, you got to leave leave a place better than you found it. Um, yeah. So I think I want people to get excited about getting local restaurants in their community. You know, I want <clears throat> instead of you know, everybody goes crazy over, oh man, are we going to get an in and out? Like, yeah. you know, like be just as excited about a locally owned restaurant, you know, popping Amen. up in the corner and trying. I mean, there's Amen. my buddy Ben Bouya um, is about to open a burger place out by Warren and that'll be 10 times what in and out is, but I want them to get the same love, um, yeah. you know, when they're, when they're taking a risk uh, and supporting local like that, because these are people, the owners shop at our grocery stores, they shop at our boutiques, you know, they buy the cars from our dealerships, they buy the houses from our realtors. Like, it's just, they pay taxes here. Like, there's just, there's so many good reasons with so many good restaurants here in, in Oklahoma. I mean, I, I've been, I've been trying to every day for my staff, if I'm out on delivery, I will uh, pick up staff from a local restaurant or pick up food, excuse me, from a local restaurant to bring back to my staff. And I'm, uh -huh. and I'm hitting up, you know, Chet's Dairy Freeze, uh, ran by my buddy Josh over there. Um, again, Jenny Sabasano is doing an incredible job. We, we talk a lot. It's kind of, it's kind of been cool because I've been able to talk with a lot of my different colleagues yeah. that normally I, you know, <clears throat> not for, you know, lack of, you know, desire or anything, sure. but it, it's just, we have a lot to talk about right now. Yeah. So yeah. it's been, so what would be, what, what, what's your, uh, website for people? Um, you know, again, 
we, we've got, we got a number of days left here. Uh, I can't thank you enough for doing this first off. I, again, I, I see you every day hustling. Uh, we're going to be, we're, we're with you. We're going to continue to be obviously the CARES Act um, and, and some of that federal legislation, the, the relief package. We didn't want to get in that uh, in this episode, but, but that is going to be helpful. And the city of Tulsa and, and other cities are going to be doing some relief packages as well. But website for those that would like to order uh, from you, and I certainly hope that they do, but where, where uh, would you like people to go? Okay, so we'll start with Trey's Bar and Grill. Um, the easiest way is to go to TraysTulsa.com and there's right at the bottom it says online ordering and you just click that it takes you to our online ordering platform you can pick out whatever you can pay you can schedule a pickup time so like if you don't know what you're going to do for dinner you can go check that out and then schedule a pickup for 7 p.m 6 p.m you can schedule it the next day even if you want to get you know if you're an essential worker and you've got lunch for the office or something you can you can schedule that out a day in advance so maybe you're Maybe you're working with uh, some of your colleagues right now and you're like, you know, it's three or 4 p.m. You're all about to leave. You're like, well, let's do lunch tomorrow. You can go ahead and schedule that for the next day and get everything okay. orders right there. So TraceTulsa.com for that. Uh, otherwise, 918-970-4950. You can certainly call it in. There's no doubt about that. Um, and then on, uh, Cardinal Club, uh, we, since we never were going to do carry out as fine dining, you know, it's hard to stuff a tomahawk ribeye into a, you know, to go box. Um, yeah. But with that, we're doing, that's where we've got our family menus and those can be found on our Facebook. I know I've been sharing it. It's on Twitter. It's on everywhere. So we've got our family meals. Um, you need to either go to the Facebook, check that out. Um, or you can just email me at Travis at Cardinal Club Tulsa.com um, for that menu. And I can get that to you really easily. Um, then to order, you just call 918-970-4766. So we get those. And again, you can schedule those. I've got orders scheduled for tomorrow night with, you know, being Lent. And, you know, Friday, we got a lot of seafood going out uh, um, tomorrow, smoked salmon uh, and whatnot. Yeah, so, good point. Good point. Yeah, there, you got to, yeah, you, you, you just got to pay attention to our Facebook, our Twitter. I mean, we're, we're yeah. trying to be everywhere. So. This Travis, help. man, we're with you. We're with you. I can't thank you enough. Um, again, I, I get a lot of pride when I see, uh, you know, young entrepreneurs like yourself hustling out there. Uh, don't want to go anywhere. You're trying to do business uh, the best you can in the state of Oklahoma because you love Oklahoma. Uh, and you love South Tulsa. You love Tulsa. So uh, we can't thank you enough uh, for doing this. We'll make sure we push this out because there's a lot of great information in here for other restauranteurs and for those, the best ways for us to be helping you move forward. So uh, I look forward to ordering from you very soon. Perfect. Thank you so much for having me on. I really do appreciate it. It's great on. Absolutely, man. Appreciate you. Thanks, Travis. We'll be back again very soon with another episode. Thanks, everybody.